Ah! Ah! The fantasy noose! It must flow! Ooh. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a hefty amount of Lord of the Rings news to kick us off. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the fact that the Folio Society has officially released their upcoming Lord of the Rings special editions. And there's only a thousand being made. So if you want them, act now, because over half are gone. I know what you're thinking. Well, how could there even be half left if there's only a thousand? Well, they cost $1,500. I was gonna ask Folio to send me some to review, but I, for some reason, don't think they'll be willing. Do you have a paperback version? Obviously bearing that quite hefty price tag means that these are a pure luxury purchase, but the art within does look very beautiful and I hope we all get to see high res versions of it before too long, that'd be nice. If you get one, Send them to me. I'd, I'd like to see that art, please. Thank you. And then I'll post them in my Discord server. Which, if you would like to see more news posted, join the Discord server, Face News Channel, boom, and I'll cover the news you post next week. Ah! But moving on, we also had two new promotional images also released for the upcoming Lord of the Rings. Sorry, Rings of Power Second Age show over at Amazon Prime. And here they are. My takeaway from these images falls in line with what I saw in Nerd of the Rings comment. Don't stop now. Go ahead and give us Kelebrimbo. You know you want to. I think that's exactly how they meant it, and I agree. Well, I don't think these images look necessarily bad at all. I'm just still not super hyped for the upcoming Lord of the Rings show. Um, it's just kind of this dying, I'll judge it when it's out feeling. But moving on into the last piece of Lord of the Rings news of the day, sponsored by my second channel where I'm releasing, yes, right now, a Fellowship of the Ring deep dive with my friend Noah. That's right, it's in the AFI Top 100 films. If you'd like to see us dive in deep and talk about it and experience this magnificent masterwork of editing from my editor, link, of course, down below. But the final news is that new covers are going to be printed for the Lord of the Rings all three books, and they are bearing promotional images from the Rings of Power. That's a bit odd. Being perfectly honest, I don't like that choice. I get why they do it, and it's not necessarily like objectively a wrong thing to do. It's just a weird thing to do. I'm not I'm not gonna get those personally. It's it it's I don't like live action like adaptation book covers in general, but this one's just weird. Actually breaking Lord of the Rings news. That's right, we have one furthermore Lord of the Rings story. There is a Kickstarter campaign for a deck of Lord of the Rings themed playing cards that had an initial goal of twenty thousand dollars. That goal has been smashed, shattered, spanked, and shot in the head because they are now sitting at at $227,000 as of recording this and rapidly rising. I think the cards look pretty darn cool, so if you'd like to support this campaign and get some cards yourself, link, of course, down below. Now, before we get into Martin's trolley behavior, let's go ahead and hear a word from today's sponsor. Oh boy, my name is Gary the Shy Goblin, and I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor for fantasy news, Campfire. Campfire is basically, basically, listen, basically, ba listen, listen, basically, it's writing on steroids. You take that little literary needle, sham it in the bum, and that is how you get the story done. Okay, so I'll show you how it works. Basically, you're able to use things, all these features, by the way, you can get at a price, your name. Basically, you can do things like these maps. I love the map. Do you have a map for your world? In these nice, customizable little modules, then you put them all together, you utilize them, and BAM! Writer's block is gone. Have you ever had writer's block? It sucks. It's not good. It's bad. So, you then organize your world, and BAM! The ending will come to you. Just check out the link in the description. Join their Discord server. Find a whole community of storytellers using this thing. Helping each other. It's beautiful. And today, start writing on steroids. Thank you, Kane. Fire. Back to the news. George R. R. Martin has made some of his fans rather irked 
in the last few months with a few of his comments and posts, and the irkage continues as I at least read a blog post title from Martin and went, <gasps> what? Because it was titled The Winds of June, which you have a lot of, a lot of hefty amount, I'd say at least five fans who are extremely excited for the release of Winds of Winter. And so if you say something and it's titled Winds of June, I'd think at least a couple of them, at least from my perspective, would go, oh, would you perhaps be saying we're getting Winds of Winter in June? No, that's not what the blog post was saying, not even a little bit at all. It's just an update about Dark Winds, which is something Martin's been talking about for quite some time. Maybe he's a little tired of us, just like we're a little tired of him, and it's kind of this like mutual fuck you <laughs> going on here. I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it too much. I really just thought this was kind of funny. While I am still a bit peeved towards Martin for his comments that were essentially like, ah, you better just wait and like what I put out until I get Winds of Winter done. If this was trolly behavior, well played. If it wasn't, it had to be, right? It's been a second since we've talked about Dresden Files here in the channel, but I'm happy to say that the Dresden series is getting another entry titled The Law. This novella will be coming in the summer of 2022, and as I'm sure many Dresden fans are quite excited, I will be reviewing it here on the channel. Yay. Now, in news that's going to indirectly affect a lot of fantasy franchises in the future, I imagine, Netflix has arguably taken its biggest blow in its history as a company. Its stock currently looks like this, and as someone who doesn't know a whole lot about stocks, I don't think that's good. I think that's, that's the bad direction. <laughs> that one makes people in Wall Street sad. And this is largely due to the fact that they've been putting up numbers showing that they've lost subscribers, which partially could have been related to their pulling out of Russia, but also they've had their fair share of controversies from both sides. But the direct result of this that's going to be affecting us as fans of the franchises Netflix often plays with is they said they're going to be pulling back on original content creation. In fact, we have already seen some projects get dropped like the upcoming Bone series. The streaming wars are reaching their kind of zenith, I feel. We're entering the age of, yes, all these people have entered the playing field and now they are vying for power. Who will come out on top? Well, I don't think Netflix is down and out for the count, of course. They're an extraordinarily successful, massive company, but this is the first time I've seen them be knocked down to their knee. And a lot of other streaming services are posting very positive numbers. So I think it's a bit more of an even playing field than a lot of people would have expected it to become even just a couple years ago. Netflix used to be just the online TV streaming service, and I don't think anyone's going to say they hold that title anymore. I amazingly am watching more Hulu and HBO than anything else recently, and I used to consider both of those to be rather, like, not worth its streaming services. And of course, with Disney having stepped into space and consumed up things like ESPN and Hulu, tying them all together into packages, the attractiveness of just dropping Netflix and instead paying for a streaming service where you get multiple things like that is going to outweigh a lot of people who have probably seen like, yeah, Netflix has Stranger Things, but I can just have a Netflix subscription for a month and stop. To counter this, Netflix has said they're going to be trying to crack down on like password sharing accounts. I don't think that's the way to get the consumer on your side. Netflix has also repeatedly announced cool ideas and projects and just gone nowhere with them. You all remember when they said they're gonna get into video games? didn't happen. My amateur just whatever advice for Netflix is instead of trying to crack down on password sharing, which I get is probably a huge problem and should be cracked down on from a business perspective. As a consumer, uh, I don't share passwords. But if you tried following through and on idea or like really doing anything aside from raising your prices without adding any new features, that that's I think that's a pretty good idea. And I still maintain, I think the streaming service with the biggest advantage in terms of the value of individual customer remains Amazon Prime. Every person who signs up for Amazon Prime to watch Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, Expanse, what have you, also gets tied into their much larger ecosystem of buying things on Amazon and the Amazon whole bubble. Netflix, you're not Amazon, so. Work on something else like that. Moving on, next news, talk about the sequel. Speaking of Netflix originals though, Love, Death, Robots season three has officially had its release date announced and a few promotional images. May 20th, we'll be seeing if season three is a lot closer to the unskippable masterpiece that was season one, 
or maybe it'll continue that downward slope that season two decided to aggressively begin. Yes, I think season one is really every single entry worth watching and season two, it's like more than half skip. Give us some interesting stuff here. Now, in I just consider everything this guy does, fantasy news, fantasy news, Andy Circus has officially been attached to an up coming animal farm adaptation penned by Nicholas Stoller. This animated movie, yes, will be directed by Andy Serkis. And uh, Mr. Director, please lend your vocal talents as well. Thank you and please, goodbye. Let's just go ahead and throw in a couple more release date announcements while we're at it. We had a few this week and I know you all especially want to hear about these next ones because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is officially going to be released June 2nd of 2023. And this is a part one. Part two is actually coming March 29th of 2024. You gotta love some good old sticky Spidey news. Now, in adaptation news that just kind of made me go, huh, why have I not heard about this before? News. Nia Dakota is set to direct the feature film adaptation of ta Coates' The Water Dancer. I went to Google for that pronunciation. I really hope I got it right. Please correct me if I did not. I know it's popular to complain about the number of adaptations we get now, and a lot of people are saying, like, why is it all sequels and adaptations? Why can't we get original movies? I still love it when I see a great book is picked up for adaptation because to me it's just giving respect and credit and going to bring something that is probably a really worthwhile reading experience into more people's lives. I agree we've had too many sequels and things that are just returning franchises but in terms of hey if there's a wonderful book that could make a great movie I would be fine if that's all Hollywood did for decades because it kind of is like an original screenplay to me right it's just like okay there's a great book we're gonna adapt it into a movie we're gonna do a good job I don't know that's that's positive I don't see why that's a problem I see that lumped in with sequel trash and I'm like that's not the same as getting Thor 8. But we must talk about the last story of the day. Not only has it been announced we are likely getting a Minecraft movie, but it is rumored right now that Jason Momoa is in talks to, to be in a Minecraft movie. First of all, Jason Momoa, love you. Second of all, I am so down. I didn't even have a moment of not being incredibly down for this concept specifically with Jason Momoa attached. Are you kidding me? That is amazing. Let me pitch it. Castaway style setup. Man gets stranded on a massive series of islands. We don't even need to know why. He's just there. Maybe we just see him awaken in a boat. That's fine. You think it's going to be all like super light and bright and happy and you know, just No, this is actually a horror movie. Jason Momoa plays a man surviving on the most dangerous island in the world, stuck in a secret pocket dimension that he cannot escape from. Throughout the entire runtime of the movie, he is building his way up from essentially nothing into what could be considered the computer age. That's right, I know what's been going on in Minecraft. You crazy motherfuckers are going ham in there and creating like utopias. Jason Momoa is a savant of crafting. The only part of the movie that's not horrific as he's dodging like, you know, creepers and crawlers and whatever monsters monsters they have in Minecraft now is the fact that during all these incredibly gritty sequences, every time he just punches a tree, it just falls apart into the little wood piles you use. That's the only consistency of the game, aside from the aesthetics of the creatures and maybe a couple like hinted pixelated things. I just love the idea of Jason Momoa in a live action movie like punching dirt and then we just keep seeing like little dirt pixelated things popping up and he keeps collecting them. Nothing else is recognized as being silly though. That's the joke. It's the greatest idea ever. Bring me in to write the screenplay. I've never played Minecraft, but don't worry, according to the Halo writers, you don't actually need to play the game to understand the material. That worked out so well for them. So let me know your move, Minecraft people. Can I create the Jason Momoa castaway for this generation where he never gets off the island and it's a horror movie? Anyway, this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you like to support what I do here. I have books, I have merch, and you should join the Discord server. Post some fantasy news stories in the Fantasy News channel. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. Love you. Bye.